this lesson, we are going to talk about PLSQL architecture. Actually, we simply mentioned about the architecture of PLSQL, but in this lesson, I want to go some deeper parts of the architecture. Why do we need to know this architecture? Sometimes it's really important to know PLSQL architecture to improve performance. If you know how it works, you use it better. We will see this in our forward sections, especially in performance sections. We can think the architecture in two parts, physical architecture and logical architecture. Let's start with the physical architecture then. Let's remember our previous PLSQL engine schema first. In Oracle database, there is an SQL engine that operates your SQL queries and returns data to the client. In this engine, there is a SQL statement executor that's here, which operates your queries. What do I mean with this operator? When you write your SQL query, it does not run directly. There are some operations bef before your query is interpreted. These are DBA subjects I will mention a bit now. When we run our query, it steps into three main processes, parsing, fetching, and executing. This operation is done by the SQL engine. We should know that Oracle knows how our query works best and better than us. So when you run your query, SQL Optimizer optimize your query. For example, if you did some joins with standard joins, it turns them into Oracle's join types. There is an optimization level. It optimizes your query based on which optimization level you selected. If you check SQL tuning subjects or DBA subjects, you will find much more about what SQL engine does before it runs your query. All your SQL operations are done in SQL engine. SQL statement executor does these operations, insert, updates, deletes, query returns, etc. PLSQL engine is a bit more complicated. Now we know that your PLSQL is generally cooperates with SQL engine. That means if you do an SQL thing, this part is handled by SQL engine. For example, if you have any DML operations inside your PLSQL call, it is sent to the SQL engine. And your DMLs are done in here. After these DML operations, the result is returned to PLSQL engine. As we can see, this arrow. If you query from a table, your result is returned to PLSQL engine, then your PLSQL code can do any programmatically operations in PLSQL engine. Let's continue with the logical architecture. Let's open up a bit how PLSQL works. Cooperates with SQL engine. As I said now, PLSQL tightly integrated with SQL. That means even SQL is a different language, while you are coding with PLSQL and SQL together, you will feel like you are coding with one language. The reason is, PLSQL codes resembles with the SQL codes. For example, when you are coding with Java and SQL, these two languages are completely different with each other. But you will see that PLSQL is just like the next step of SQL. PLSQL engine allows us to create, manage, and execute SQL and PLSQL codes and interact with the database. If you write an SQL code inside your PLSQL codes, it will call the SQL engine and have this operation done with SQL engine. Then the result is sent back to the PLSQL engine. This operation is called as context switches. One engine to another and the opposite is valid. This operation is so fast that you will not easily understand. But if your code needs too much context switches, 
then you may have performance issues. But don't worry, there are some advanced PLSQL methodologies to handle this and I will teach you all these in this course. Enables subprograms. When you start programming, the most frequent problem is how can I save this script and run again and again instead of copy paste all the time. Copy paste is very boring and your code will be so ugly with unnecessary repeated codes. PLSQL enables us to save and reuse our codes and this really helps. By the way, you may have already know what is subprograms, variables, etc. The main things, but some students may not know, so I am trying to explain with so brief and instructive way. Anyway, PLSQL has so powerful subprogram techniques that will help you in all the business logic of your work. These programs can be shared with other users so we can use them like a library. And dynamic queries. PSQL enables us to create dynamic queries upon your program. You can either change the workloads of your query based on your variables, or you can completely create a new SQL query and run it with PSQL. And case insensitivity. PLSQL is a case insensitive programming language, but I commend you to use some rules on writing your code for readability and understandability. You can either use your own rules or follow Oracle's naming or coding styles. That will be your choice. This will not affect anything in your program. I sometimes will inform you about this style of Oracle's recommendations and optimizer. There is an SQL optimizer in Oracle. PLSQL has its own optimizer too. Many times our code will not be designed so good for performance. Oracle offers us an option to optimize our code. We can select the optimization level and it will basically or deeply optimize our code. Optimize means changing our code before it runs with the best way of performance. We will see how to optimize our code by ourselves and by letting it to be done by the software in our next chapters. So let's continue now. Enables object oriented programming. It enables object oriented programming with abstract data types. We will see how to do this in our next chapters and web development. You can even develop web applications. You can use PLSQL Gateway and the PLSQL Web Toolkit to create a new web-based applications. Actually, I don't think that you will ever need to create a web application with using PLSQL. There are many other languages that does this operation with more sufficient than faster ways. And your company will have the ability or platform to run these languages at least one of these. So I'm not planning to teach this subject in this course. It will be unnecessary for you. So let's pass the other one. Actually, we will frequently mention about the logical structure of PSQL in our next chapters in detail. But I tried to explain a bit before you start with adding some benefits of this language. I hope you learned something. If you could not understand, don't worry, we will mention all these with more details in our next lessons, because this is a huge architecture. This was just an intro before you start. So this is the end of the architecture of PLSQL lessons. See you in our next lessons.